Hello, I'm Chris Hernandez. This is the Weekly Report, a look at news about programs and services provided by the departments of the City of Kansas City, Missouri. Winter has been hitting pretty hard lately, so with all the snow and extreme cold, the city reminds residents and businesses to be good neighbors and to clear sidewalks next to their homes and offices. It will help pedestrians who rely on walking to get to school, to work, and home. Not only is this a good thing to do, the city's municipal code requires it. In addition, during extremely cold weather, remember to protect your pets and keep them inside. Animal control staff can impound pets found outside and issue citations to their owners. Residents who observe pets left outdoors in extreme cold weather may report it to the city by calling 311 or the non-emergency police number, which is 816-234-5111. City Attorney William Geary has appointed Keith Ludwig to the position of city prosecutor. Ludwig previously served as the first assistant prosecutor, a courtroom prosecutor, and in private practice. He brings both law and business management experience to this job. Ludwig replaces former city prosecutor Lowell Gard, who has retired. Now let's check in with some of our city's departments. I'm Janet O'Hagan with the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities. It's cold outside, but there are lots of opportunities to come inside, warm up, and enjoy many events for all ages. We are so excited to have the Royal Fan Fest at Bartle Hall on Friday, January 31st, and Saturday, February 1st. The event will feature appearances by current and former Royal players, as well as interactive games for fans of all ages main stage events, and more. Visit the many autograph stages set up around the convention center and batter up with diamond host Mark Bryson. Play some wiffle ball and learn tips straight from the big leaguers or test out your baseball skills. Fans of all ages can have a ball all weekend long. A portion of the proceeds will again benefit Royals Charities. Go to royals.com slash fanfest for additional information. Looking forward to spring? Come to the Metropolitan Lawn and Garden Show at the American Royal Center from February 7th to 9th. The Metropolitan Lawn and Garden Show is the largest consumer show of its kind in the region. If it has to do with landscaping, statuary, water gardens, decks, patios, fountains, gazebos, or anything else that makes outdoor living fun and inviting, you'll find it here. For additional information, check out the show's website. World of Wheels returns once again to Bartle Hall from February 12th through the 16th and features America's finest hot rods, custom trucks, and motorcycles. There will be free autographs, special appearances by celebrities such as the kings of NASCAR, Richard and Kyle Petty, wrestling superstar, Shawn Michaels, and live demonstrations, including freestyle motocross and stunt shows. For information on showtimes and tickets, go to www.autorama.com. These are just a few of the many events that the Kansas City Convention and Entertainment Facilities offer our community. To learn about even more events, visit kcconvention.com and click on the events calendar. Or call 816 513-5000. Kansas City's West Side and the West Side Can Center have made giant strides in improving the quality of life for their citizens, and those efforts are being replicated across all shifts, thanks to the good work of officers like Nathan Kinate and Bradley Bailey. For insight into their efforts, we spoke with their commander, Captain Darren Ivey. Brad and Nate have really taken this project to heart. They noticed that there was a, a problem of tracking individuals over there and problems on the west side, and they took the whole concept of community policing and, and grasped onto it and, and ran with it and done an excellent job along with other members of their sector and other members of the Central Patrol Division. I know we're making a difference because the way that the community is reaching out to the officers now, it used to be that they would reach out to maybe this, the officers assigned to the west side can center, but now officers who work in that area are getting phone calls from the community who need their assistance or who want to pass on information. Community policing should never be going out of style. It, it, it is a concept of police working with the community to solve problems and that's what police work is all about. Our motivation for 
our project with the Westside community is primarily just to increase the quality of life. Uh, it started out as a violent crime project and has turned into a quality of life project and just helping the community target specific problems that have come up over the last couple months. You know, we just encourage everybody else to increase their presence in, in their communities and, you know, this is something that we thought was a long shot and it's, it's in turn paid off for the community police relationship in the west side and can be taken anywhere else in the city. Things that are letting us know that we're actually making a difference in touching the, touching the community is the citizens coming out and contacting us voluntarily rather than us having to seek them out. Uh, people waving to us as we're driving up and down the streets, people stopping us to say thank you as we're driving through, the, through their neighborhoods. I would definitely say relationships is the, the biggest key. Uh, without to building the relationships that we've built over there, we couldn't have gotten it this far with the project as we've gotten. The, the property crimes, the graffiti, the tagging, has all of a sudden started to con calm down. Uh, people are starting to paint over the old graffiti that's been out there and in turn take more pride in their community. It's been rewarding to actually get some momentum back into daily patrol to actually come to work and have a goal, know that you're going to go out and target specific individuals, specific problems, and, and reach an outcome with that that's going to help somebody else. This project has been probably one of the most rewarding things I've done so far in my career. Uh, it's given us the opportunity to go out and meet people that uh, live in the neighborhoods and to find out rather than a reactive standpoint when someone calls 911, find out what the problems are in the neighborhood so that we can address those before something might happen. It does help making it uh, more enjoyable, coming to work every day, uh, going out, targeting specific problems and sp specific people uh, rather than just following the radio. People in the neighborhoods uh, know us by name now. Uh, they're coming out of their houses to talk to us. Uh, and they're not just doing that with us, but they're doing that with other officers as well. Uh, we're trying to essentially change the culture towards the police and how people view the police uh, to know that we're on their side and we want to help them better their neighborhood and better the community. Uh, the Westside Can Center has been a big part in uh, kind of providing uh, a starting point for this project. Uh, uh, Officer Tomasek and Officer Villalobos have done tremendous work on the west side over the years and we wanted to continue this project into the, other, the shifts that they're not there uh, so that it's a community project uh, through all parts of the day. We've been able to tell that we've made a, made a difference over there this year uh, through increased patrols, uh, through word of mouth from citizens. Uh, violent crime has dropped from uh, 33 reported aggravated assaults in 2012 uh, down to 18 this year. Uh, there were two homicides in the west side area last year and there have not been any this year. Uh, so we'd like to contribute uh, the work that we've done in addition to the work that other officers are doing uh, through extra patrol, community cooperation to uh, an overall reduction in violent crime and quality of life. Relationships and problem solving is one of the most important aspects of police work and officers like Brad Bailey and Nathan Kinnate personify community policing. I'm Officer Shelley Gaddis. Have a safe week. Oh, well curling is a great sport that you can do on ice. Uh, it's a 500 year old sport that you can actually uh, that's been around for a long time. It's now an Olympic sport, and it's a sport that uh, I've been doing for almost 15 years myself. And I'm at about 10 years. And uh, actually, I, I think I taught Ian here <laughs> how to play. And he's a Canadian, too, so that, that's a little unusual. <laughs> but uh, it's a great sport. It's uh, for all ages. You can do it from uh, 10 to 80 years old. Uh, we actually even have an 80 year old in our club. Male uh, or female. Yes. Yep. No gender is better than the other. And it's a good social sport. Uh, we like to get together afterwards. Uh, it's recreational. Uh, I know you all will see it in the Olympics, but it is a sport that you can do. It's easy to learn. It's uh, not that difficult. Uh, but you can get very good at it and you could eventually become an Olympic curler yourself. So. Yeah, it doesn't take you know, muscles and a lot of uh, athletic ability, it's more of a finesse sport. Uh, we have a lesson that you can come out and try to do. Uh, we actually offer it throughout our winter season that we play up till April. Uh, we also offer leagues for those who really get into it. 
and you can actually uh, uh, become quite accomplished if you try one of our leagues. But uh, basically, in curling, you just want to score more points. It's not like figure skating where uh, it's up to a judge to decide. Uh, so when you see in the Olympics, you'll definitely know who the winner is. So. And how do you score points? You score points by getting your stones closer to the center of the house than your opponent. What makes curling curling is we actually spin the rock on the ice. And so actually, if we spin the rock in this rotation, it will actually arc in this direction as it goes down the ice. So if I actually curl the stone this way, it will arc this way. So as you see, any curling stone goes down, you can actually curl another stone behind another stone. And so it makes it a very strategic game in how you place your stones and how you take out other people's stones as you try to get your stones closer to the center. The Kansas City Curling Club has been around since 1987. Uh, we stopped in the 90s uh, and then we started again in 2003. Uh, we used to curl down in, at Pepsi uh, and then they closed that rink and then Line Creek has been very generous to us. In fact, their ice has actually been better than the ice that we used to have. And so we've been very happy with be playing here. And it's a great place to curl. It is. Great people here. You don't need any special equipment. Uh, all you need is rubber sole shoes and uh, loose fitting clothing that will keep you warm. It's a little cool in here. We've got a sweatshirt. We're dressed to go. Yeah. And, uh, Nothing special, uh, and then uh, we provide all the brooms and sliders and stones that you would want to uh, that you can play with. For more information, you can go to our website at www.kccurling.com. The city has partnered with KCPNL and the U.S. Department of Energy's Better Buildings Accelerators to participate in a two-year energy data accelerator program. This program promotes energy efficiency by using data to determine which Kansas City buildings might be the best candidates for energy efficiency improvements. For more information on this program, visit energy.gov slash betterbuildings. In observance of the Martin Luther King Jr. holiday, city offices and the 311 call center will be closed Monday, January 20th. Curbside trash and recycling collection will be delayed one day, so residents who usually have Monday collection will receive the service on Tuesday, January 21st, and then residents who usually have Friday collection will receive it on Saturday of that week. The city reminds individuals who own rental property in Kansas City to renew or establish registration of their property with the city's Neighborhoods and Housing Services Department. The registration deadline is January 31st for the year 2014. Annual registration of rental properties is required by city ordinance. Failure to register may result in a fine. To register, please visit kcmo.gov neighborhoods and click Rental Property Registration or call 816-513-9010. For more information about any of today's stories, please log on to kcmo.gov weeklyreport weekly report. That does it for this edition of the Weekly Report. I'm Chris Hernandez. Have a great week.